For most of us, Sync Deeply is not as straightforward and simple. For example, in a video from Barry Tassio, he asked some seemingly easy and straightforward question to a group of college students, which turned out to be not that easy. I asked these guys, how long does it take for the Earth to go around the sun? What do you reckon, cuz? <laughs> is it 24 hours? Obviously a day, yes. Or take this problem, which has been given to thousands of college students. You go into a toy store, and there's a toy bat and a toy ball. Together they cost $1.10. And the bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Ten cents. We're all wrong, aren't we? What's the answer? <laughs> this looks like an easy question, but when you slow down and think a bit more, you will realize that there's no way the ball should cost ten cents, because otherwise the total cost would be one point two dollar instead of one point one. Instead, you actually need to do some calculation and realize the real answer is five cents. But they all got answered wrong at the beginning because they all saw that this is a simple question and just to give an automatic intuitive answer. And this concept that human has two modes of thinking has been introduced and popularized by the book Think Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. The idea is that your brain can function in kind of two different modes. The system one thinking is your fast intuitive brain. For example, if I ask you what's one plus one, you'll just tell me it's two. You don't really think about it because it's already cash memorized. It's part of your intuition. But if I give you a more complicated question, like what is 129 multiplied by 3.56? You don't have the answer ready. You actually need to take time, do some calculations, think that through, and give me the answer. And this is system two, the other modes of brain where it is slower, but much more rational, give more accurate answer. Both system one and system two play a critical role in our life and decision making. But the problems often occur when you try to solve a complex system two problems with system one thinking, which is exactly what we observed in the video clips before. And that's also where we are at with large language model. Even though it is already impressive, it didn't really have any system two slow thinking. All it does is just try to predict what the best next words are based on the sequence of words that I already have. It didn't have any default ability to break down a complex task into small steps and explore all the different options. And in a video from Andrew Capsi, he had a really good analogy that the way large language model currently works is almost like you are on a running train, but also building the trail in front of you at the same time. So two large language models, there's literally no any difference between answering what's one plus one versus complex mathematical formula. And this is also why fine tuning works, because if all large language model has is system one intuitive thinking, then fine tuning is basically training AI to get a much better intuition on a given subject. It's the same thing for human. If you practice something for more than 10,000 hours, then you can actually solve a lot of system two level problems with just system one level intuition. But how does human actually do system two level thinking? When faced with complex question, we'll break it down to subset of problems. Think through each of the problem and explore different methods. And obviously this takes time, but in exchange, it gets a higher quality and accuracy. And secondly, we also know when should we make this trade-off. So each person's brain is almost like an adaptive system that can switch between system one and system two effectively. And what does this mean for a large language model is it should be able to take time, break it down into subset of questions and explore different options. And that behavior also needs to happen adaptively. We wouldn't want large language model to have that behavior for every single simple request. And this too seems to be the focus area for GPT-5 development as well, which has been mentioned by Selm Altman during an interview with Bill Gates. Here is a quick video clip. When you look at the next two years, what, what do you think some of the, the key milestones will be? Maybe the most important areas of progress will be around reasoning ability. Right now, GPT-4 can reason in only extremely limited ways and also reliability. You know, if you, if you ask GPT-4 most questions 10,000 times, one of those 10,000 is probably pretty good, <laughs> but it doesn't always know which one. And you'd like to get the best response of 10,000 each time. So that'll be that 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 increase in reliability will be important. I'll be interested if it if you ever get to the point where, you know, like solving a complex math equation where you might have to you know apply transformations an arbitrary number of times that the control logic for the reasoning may have to be quite a bit more complex than just what we do today. At a minimum, it seems like we need some sort of adaptive compute. Right now we spend, you know, the same amount of compute on each token, a dumb one, or like figuring out some complicated math. Yeah, graph. when we say do the Riemann hypothesis. That deserves a lot of compute. the same compute as saying the. Right. <laughs> so, so at a minimum, we've got to get that to work. We may need much more sophisticated things beyond it. 
So obviously, we should see some very big and exciting updates when GPT-5 come out, especially for those reasoning and system two level thinking. But apart from better model itself, what are the ways that we can do today to enforce large language model have system two level thinking so that you can use it to complete complex tasks or solve big problems? There are two common ways, either through prompt engineer or communicative agents. Firstly, some prompt engineer strategy. One of the most simple and common ways to do that is chain of thought. Many of you are probably pretty familiar with this method. It basically means that before the large language model is going to generate anything, you will insert a sentence called let's think step by step. This has been an effective way that force large language model to break down the problem into small steps and think through those steps. And what's amazing is that this method is so simple and generic that can be used in many different areas. On the other hand, you can even try some few short prompt examples. So instead of saying, let's think step by step, you actually give an example about what the step should be and how you should think about those problems. This was effective because it forced large language model to think through a few different steps before it gets to the answer. Very similar to how our human brain functions. But the downside is also pretty clear because this chain of thought prompting only get the large language model to consider one possibility. But as human, when we try to do creative problem solving, it is very common that we will explore more than just one path or one solution. The journey of problem solving often involves exploring multiple different options, played out and keep track about all the learnings and new knowledge acquired during the exploration. And this is something that chain of thought is not capable to do. That's why people also explore more advanced prompting tactics like self-consistency with chain of thoughts, short for COTSC. The way it works is it gets a large language model to run chain of thought multiple times and in the end, review and vote on answers that are most reasonable. It does require you to implement some code to iteratively run this chain of thought process multiple times. And the benefit of this is it does explore a few different options and paths before it lands on the final answer. But the downside is also pretty clear. It does cost more token when it's necessary. And quite often, large language models very likely explore very similar ways of solving the problem instead of explore real diverse options. That's why people propose another option called a tree of thoughts. And this is probably one of the most advanced prompting tactics to achieve system two level thinking. The main innovation here is that it gets large language model to come up with a few different ways that the problem can be solved and explore all the different branch and options that seems promising and also keep a state about all the paths that it has explored so far. So that if the path it is on doesn't really lead to the outcome they want, then they can trace back and find the second best solutions. The, but the main problem of the trade of thought is that the implementation is quite complicated. You need to make multiple calls to large language model and also save the results somewhere to keep a state of trace so that it can retrieve back. And this is really cool because it significantly increased the amount of options that a large language model explore. It try to simulate a very similar concept about for Go is doing the tree search to explore all the different options though at a much smaller scale. So what would be really interesting is if someone actually implement an effective search ability for large language model so that it can explore tons of different options without burning through a lot of unnecessary tokens. And that's kind of the limitation of the trail of thought mechanism and moment because this exploration and search process is not effective and also does require a huge amount of implementation upfront. So it's not a trivial task to implement a tree of thoughts for a specific scenario. This is where I think the second option, communicative agents provide an elegant solution to enforce those type of system two level thing. Communicative agents are basically multi-agent setup where users can easily define two different agents and simulate a conversation between them so that it can reflect and spot the flaw in each other's perspective and thinking process. It was initially introduced by a project called Camu, Communicative Agents for Mind Exploration of Large Scale Language Model Society, where they showcase some complex example that large language model can complete tasks like develop a trading bot for the stock market by simulating a conversation between two agents, Python programmer and stock trader. And this really works because of a couple of reasons. One is that a large language model is much better at judging whether an answer is right or wrong rather than generate the answer. So by dedicated agents specifically for reviewing and critique, it can actually does a pretty good job in terms of identify the flaw of thinking. Another reason I think this communicative agent is a great short-term solution is because how easy it is to set up as there are many different ways you can get agents to work together 
For example, if you are doing content generation, you might have very sequential linear flow to just get a manager do the planning and a researcher to do the research and hand over the results to content creator. Or it can be just a joint chat where you can put a problem solver as well as a critic in the same room so that they can continue the conversation between each other until the critic thinks the problem has been solved properly. And you can even mix match them together into some kind of hierarchical collaboration modes by delegating different tasks to different teams. So it has a lot of potential and pretty easy to set up. For the past six months, there are a huge amount of different multi-agent frameworks has shown up. Initially, there are frameworks like ChatDev and MetaGPT. They are pretty good for sequential order collaboration, but a bit hard to set up. And the best framework so far, in my opinion, is still AutoGen, where it is super flexible and probably the only framework that allows you to set up those joint chat or hierarchical chat with just a few lines of code. And there's also a new one called Crew AI. It is really easy to set up sequential order, but the framework is not that flexible yet for other type of collaborations at this point. And Autogen recently just released their no code interface called Autogen Studio, which really lowered the efforts to set up those communicative agent collaboration flow to solve complex problems. So I'm going to give you a quick example about how can you set up a group of agents to resolve some complex problem that even GPT-4 is failing today. So let's get it. I'm going to implement a quick communicative agent setup with two different agents. One is a problem solver who is actually going to solve the problem. And another is a reviewer who will review the results, identify any flaw in the answer provided by problem solver. And we will set up this communicative agents in Autogen Studio. To install Autogen Studio, you can just open terminal, do pip install Autogen Studio. This will install the whole Autogen package as well as the front end. And once you did that, the next thing is you want to set up the OpenAI API key. You can get OpenAI API key by visiting platform.openai.com slash API keys. Let's click on create a new secret key and give a name Autogen Studio and come back paste in your API key here. After you set this up, you can just run Autogen Studio UI dash dash port A0A1. Once it succeeds, you should see a message like this. All you need to do is just copy this link into your browser. And you will see the interface like this. It has a couple of sections. Skills is basically a list of functions that agents can have access to, like Google search. We can create custom functions. For example, for the agent to call OpenAI Dell e API key to generate images. It is basically like functions for function calling. And you can create any type of new skills by clicking on this new skill button and just putting the function codes here. On the other hand, you can also create actual agents by clicking on this add a new agent button. You can give a name, description, as well as the max rounds of auto reply. This basically means how many times the agent can autonomously reply back until it stops. Because we're actually going to simulate the conversation between two different agents. You will want to set up a maximum here to prevent it from having the conversation infinitely. And you can also give a system message here. It's basically like instruction to tell agent who they are and what they should be doing. Also add any skills that you have defined in the skill list. And in the end, you can create a workflow. So workflow is basically a predefined workflow of how agents should work together. One workflow can be simply a group chat between two or three different agents to review each other's work and resolve things. But it can also be sequential. So I asked GPT to generate tasks that can be used to test system two level thinking. So the task is so there are four animals, a lion, a zebra, a, a giraffe, and an elephant. They are located in four different houses with different colors, red, blue, green, yellow. And the task is to determine which animal is in which colored house based on the following crew. So the line is either in the first or the last house, and the green house is immediately to the right of the red house. The zebra is in the third house, the green house is next to the blue house, and the elephant is in the red house. So this is actually a pretty complicated problem. For me, it is not even clear how should I get it started. It is not that easy. And next is I try to test whether GPT-4 can actually get it with chain of thought mechanism. So I can see that GPT-4 actually try to think step by step, and review the crew one by one to come up with an example like this. To make it easier for us to review, I put all the crews on the left. So for the answer that GPT-4 generated, the first one, the line is either the first or last house, which is correct. And greenhouse should be immediately to the right of the red house. Okay, so the second crew didn't seem to be correct. Greenhouse is located in the end, which is not immediately to the right of the red house. And also want to give it a try to see whether I can ask GPT-4 to just reflect and figure out whether it can resolve the issue itself. So I will tell it, reflect on the answer and see if you can do it better. 
Okay, so what happened now is you can see that GPT-4 goes through another thinking process. But the weird thing is said that this revised approach reaffirmed the initial solution, but presented the reasoning in a slightly more structured manner. So it's, this is actually surprising that it didn't even spot the issue that the greenhouse is not immediately to the right of the red house. I think this showcases that it is actually pretty hard for large language model to self-reflect and improve the answer for those complicated cases. And this is where the multi-agent system is useful. So let's go back to the Autogen Studio. The first thing we want to do is create two different agents, one for reviewer and one for problem solver. So for reviewer, I will give it a name as well as system message. You are the reviewer and critic. Your goal is to review the answer and work delivered from problem solver. Decide if the answer is correct. If not, what are the flaws? And give feedback back to the problem solver. And remember, you only spot issue. Do not give solutions. And the rest, I'm going to keep the same. And second is problem solver. And I will give a system message. You are a helpful assistant. You will be given a task. And you will try to solve the task and hand over to reviewer to review. If the reviewer gives you any feedback, it treat on the answer. Never say terminate. And I add this line so that problem solver cannot terminate the task. It has to be approved by the reviewer. And after we create these two agents, we can go to workflow, create a group chat. And this one problem with Autogen Studio at the moment is that it doesn't seem like I can create a group chat from scratch. However, there should be one group chat workflow already and click on group chat manager. In here, you can swap in and swap out different agents. And in my case, I just add problem solver and reviewer. And I will also give it a system prompt. Let problem solver solve the task and let reviewer review the results and send back the feedback to the problem solver to repeat this process above until the reviewer confirm and say terminate. And I'm going to click OK. We have set up this group chat successfully. We can go back to playground, click add a new button, and select the workflow that we just created. Got a group problem solver. Click create. I can paste in the exact same task I gave before. Okay, we got a response back. We can see the detailed chat history. At the beginning, the user proxy agent gave the task to problem solver, where the problem solver tried to think step by step and generate the initial answer. And let's compare it with the actual criteria. So the line is on the first or last, which is correct. The green should be immediately to the right of the red house, which is not correct here. So the initial answer is incorrect. But the good thing is that the reviewer actually reviewed the results and point out that there are a few flaws in the deduction process. And also point out that the final arrangement didn't really take into account for the clue that the green house is next to the blue house. And then the problem solver take this feedback, try it again. And this time it come up with a new answer. And let's compare again. So the line is either first or last, which is correct. The greenhouse should be immediately to the right of the red house, which is also correct. The zebra is on the third house. The greenhouse should be next to the blue house. Elephant is in the red house. This is a correct answer. So this is a quick example of how you can set up two communicative agents to let them collaborate and solve complex problems. You can take a similar structure with those type of feedback loop for solving other problems as well. So those are examples of some tactics you can use today to drive system two thinking with large language model. Honestly, I'm really keen to see a world where large language model actually have adaptive system to solve really complex problems in a native way. Comment below if you know any other research methods that can effectively drive system two thinking. I'll continue posting interesting projects and advancements in AI. So please consider giving me subscribe if you enjoy this content. Thank you and I'll see you next time.